Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the R Show. Tonight, school is in session. We have Professor Sale is talking about jeans tonight. Wanna to say hello, Jason? Hey everyone. As I say, we're gonna be talking about jeans tonight, but just for the people that don't know about you, Jason, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and where they can find you? Yeah, um, my name on YouTube is Prof Sales, and I am a reseller. I sell primarily on eBay and Amazon, especially as of late. And my eBay business has been primarily concentrated on jeans. Not all jeans, but a lot of jeans. So I have a retail management background, so I bring some of those um, things that I learned at that, that career field to reselling and I also have a teaching background so that's why the name Prof Sales and I used to be a professor at a local community college so I like to kind of combine two passions with one and um, thank you Chris for having me on the show. Well thanks for agreeing to come on. Absolutely. Uh, now, now you say you had, uh, I'm going to start with this question because it's been on my mind for a little bit. When you say you started with the channel manager and then you went with jeans, so how did you, was it like a big chain jean company that you worked with or was it just a store? That's a good question. Um, actually, I was a retail manager with Gap and I also worked at Banana Republic and Old Navy. They're all the same company. And Gap actually got its start selling jeans and records in 1969. They sold Levi's jeans. Now, over the years, they quit selling records, but and they developed their own line of jeans. But Gap was known um, for its jeans. It was and it was a very iconic brand in the '90s. It kind of fell away in the 2000s and so on. But there was a Saturday Night Live skit about the Gap girls that was really famous there at one point, and it was just this really hot and up and coming brand. And you know, when I became a uh, member of management there, I realized that jeans were kind of the linchpin to a lot of people's outfit. They go in, they pick out a pair of jeans, especially women, but men too. They pick out a pair of jeans and they say, all right, well, I got this pair of jeans I want to wear, but now I need a shirt to go with them. Oh, and I probably need a belt to kind of set it off and maybe an undershirt to wear under it sometimes and maybe a different shirt, maybe socks, so on and so on. So that's how they came to um, prominence in the 90s and, and 2000s. And when I came in, I realized that, you know, people, jeans are a staple. Um, they're a staple of so many people's wardrobe. I don't know what the number is now, but back then, you know, I believe the average person had at least seven pair of jeans. Um, women have a few more than that. I think women is probably more like 10 or 12. So, and they've been around for over hundred years. So it just seemed a natural fit when I started reselling that I investigated jeans. Okay. And what actually got you into reselling? Well, um, strangely enough, I'd been doing it for many years off and on in a limited basis, not really jeans, but just other things that I'd got my hands on. And I was working for a major company a few years back and got hurt on the job. And after I got hurt on the job, I couldn't work. Um, I was waiting for that to kind of all get resolved. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll start reselling Again, now I didn't know anything about all you guys on YouTube and this big, huge reselling communities out there with the Reseller Society, for instance. I didn't know anything about all that. I just thought maybe I can buy some things and sell some things and make a few bucks. And so that's how I got into it. And I realized, you know, pretty quickly, I was like, hey, there's a business here that can be had. And so I realized that pretty quickly and just started down that road and haven't looked back since. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna give a couple of shout outs for let's see if there's any questions. No, I don't see any questions yet, but uh see uh Deep BD's here. Hello, Angie's here, Tanya's here, Dawn is here, uh Glenn, Swamp Picker's here, and Amelia's here again. Black guy Joe all the way from Australia is listening. So, if you have any questions for Jason, please put them in the comments with a question mark or the word question so I can catch them. Um, do you sell just men's jeans or women's jeans or both? 
Well, that's kind of a complicated question, I guess, not because it's a complicated answer, but because of um, which genes I think are the best to sell. Um, women's genes are much more common on eBay, and they're much more common out in society. Women have more pair of genes than men, on average. But the funny thing is, men's genes sell for a better price. So I try to mix that um, balance between the two and make it about, it ends up being about 85, 15, about 85% women's and 15% men's. But I'm always looking for more men's because they just sell so much better. They sell quicker, they sell for better money. But no matter how hard I try, my, my percentage seems to be right around that 85, 15. Huh. Okay. Well, we got a couple questions right now. Uh, Don Harley Lily wants to know what is your best selling brand of jeans? And actually, somebody else asked the same question. So, well, if you mean my best selling, the ones that sell um, the most, then that's going to be Levi's. If you go on eBay right now, for instance, and you type in jeans, you're going to see all these, you know, if you do it on a desktop, you're going to see all these brands over on the side. It's going to tell you how many listings there are of each. And you're going to see the most listings are of Levi's. Why? It's the most popular brand of jeans. Is it the most expensive? No. Is it necessarily the best made? Uh -uh. But it doesn't matter. It's got like that huge brand name. I mean, Levi's has been around since the late 1800s. And, um, you know, it's just an iconic brand. In the United States, probably in other countries as well, to some degree, but specifically in the United States. So Levi's sells the best. And if I looked in my spreadsheet right now, I am sure I can't tell you the exact number, but I'm sure I have more Levi's listed than any other brand. Okay. And our the next question is from Garage Flips. He asks, What's the most you ever got for a pair of jeans? Um, the most I've ever had, I don't really fool with the super high end ones. I have um, reflipped some jeans from Nordstrom Rack that were new. I sold a pair of um, Seven for All Mankind. I think they sold for $115. Uh, no, I take that back. It wasn't Seven for All Mankind, it was True Religion. They sold for about $115. They were new. And True Religion is a really expensive pair of jeans. Um, if you buy them new, they can go up as high as 400 bucks. They're not cheap. But uh, Nordstrom Rack, which is a great resource for clothing resellers in general, you can find some great deals there if you catch the markdowns at the right times. They uh, actually had some True Religion jeans marked down to $22, brand new. That's just crazy. I mean, that's like Walmart prices. And so I, I snapped those up right away. They, they weren't super great um, sizes or anything special about them, but they're true religion. And true religion is um, just a really well-known name in those circles. And I believe they sold for 115 or maybe it was 120. I don't remember the exact total, but you know, even after fees, that was a great, that was a great flip. And I think they only said, I think I only had them about maybe three weeks before they sold, which is not bad. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to give this information out, but DBD wants to know what is your eBay name? I will tell her if she watches my videos on YouTube, I am betting at some point she will see it. Okay. Uh, Rifty, Tanya wants to know where do you buy your jeans? They are like $8 at Goodwill. Well, Tanya, you need to move. Um, <laughs> Hey, Tanya. <laughs> no, but um, obviously Goodwill is one spot and $8 is high. I would grant you that is not, you can still make money on jeans at eight bucks, even um, bread and butter run of the mill jeans, but that's tricky. Goodwill is a great spot for me here in my area of the country. They are actually $5 at Goodwill. And I have, um, uh, 21 Goodwills within one hour's drive of me. So it's not a problem. Um, estate sales, yard sales, sometimes you pick them up, sometimes you don't. People there are going to sell them to you for really cheap, usually maybe a couple bucks a piece. Um, the weigh-in pays 
sometimes I, I get lucky there, but more often than not, they're just kids' jeans or really crappy run-of-the-mill jeans that just aren't worth much. So I tend to stay at the Goodwills. I tend to stay, you know, sourcing the yard sales and estate sales and so on. And believe it or not, you can sometimes find them in lots on OfferUp, Garage Sale, Craigslist. It's not common, at least in my neck of the woods, but it does happen. Sometimes people have run across them from storage units, for instance, and you've got a little bit of work to go through, make sure they're not damaged and moldy and moths have gotten to them and all those good things. But you, that you can use all of those resources, and I've used all of them. Uh, Swamp Picker. Well, you basically answered his first part of the question. He asked, do you buy much from Goodwill? And then he asked, what are your other avenues? Yeah, I mean, Goodwill um, probably represents 85% of the jeans that I buy. Um, I, I am fortunate in this area. I live in uh, a bit higher you know, income area. I, I don't have a higher income necessarily, but I live in one that's got some super high incomes and some of the jeans that get dropped off are great. Um, you find even just a lot of run of the mill jeans that, you know, the thing about that is, you know, the goodwills that are out there and so on, they don't really care about jeans. They don't care about most clothes. They're not going to end up on their love rack, you know, priced higher that often occasionally. And sometimes I laugh because they'll put jeans up there that don't make any sense and are not selling for really anything online. But Goodwill is by far the best in my area. I don't have savers in this area, for instance. They're just not in this part of the country. Um, so Goodwill is basically where I find most of my jeans. Okay. Uh, I think I might have had this question, but Amelia wants to know, how do you tell the difference between men's jeans and women's jeans? That's a good question. Um, there's a few ways you can go about it. Men's jeans tend to have the waist and inseam length or sizes together. So, you know, you'll see like 34 by 32. Now, that's not always a common, uh, the true or true, but for the most part, women's tend to be sized with even numbers. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. But there are brands out there that size their women's like men's, their men's like women's, and there's some brands that put both sizes on there. And that makes it really complicated. So here's what you can do to tell the difference when you run into one of those. Lucky Brand, for instance, is one of these. Lucky Brand, you'll buy like, um, you know, 8 slash 28. And that's basically supposed to be the waist size. And there are women who wear men's jeans and men who wear women's jeans, but usually women's jeans are going to come with stretch material in them, and most men's jeans are not. So when you look at the material, if you look at the tag inside and you see what it's made of, you're going to see some sort of stretch material, 1% lycra, polyurethane, spandex, one of those, 2%, uh, all the way up to 4% sometimes. The other way you can tell is that look at the pockets on the front, the front pockets. Women's pockets tend to be very shallow. So if you put your hands down in the pockets, you shouldn't be able to get your whole hand down in there on a women's pair of jeans. Where men's jeans, typically you can get your whole hand down, they're deeper pockets. Um, and the other thing is too, and a lot of, I can't, if I could show you on a pair, a lot of women's jeans have, um, this is a pair of Joe's jeans, which is another great brand. A lot of women's jeans have this little extra pocket right here. I don't see if you can see where my index finger is on my right hand. That almost is never there on men's jeans. Um, again, you know, th the other thing you can do too, if you really want to get, um, to be sure that what you have, is you can go, and, and I do this, you can go to the manufacturer's website. And I like to save some of the websites of the brands that I like to buy on my iPad so I can quickly pull it up as, you know, I just, I just save the link. I can quickly go to like Silver Jeans website or Seven for All Mankind or American Eagle or Lucky Brand or all these jeans. And that way you can look and see because a lot of times women's, um, the actual fit and the men's fits are different. You know, for instance, um, I don't know if this one's got a fit listed in it. Yeah, this is fit provocateur, actually. So if you go on the Joe's Jeans website, um, you 
you can actually find that fit and see if it's a women's fit or a men's fit. It's usually not going to be both. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, when in doubt, you could just list a pair of jeans and, <laughs> you know, I've done this. I have screwed up a couple times and listed a women's pair as a men's pair. I mean, it has happened before. You just miss it for whatever reason. And I actually had someone on eBay say, hey, I just want to let you know this pair of jeans is actually <laughs> a women's pair, not a men's pair, um, which was a little embarrassing, I got to say. But, you know, I fixed it. And I said, oh, they're absolutely right. I just missed that one. But you can use all those methods to kind of tell the difference between them. So hope that was, uh, hope that answered the question. I believe it did. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Black Guy Joe. He wants to know what is your percentage of returns due to size mismatch? It's like only about two or three percent. And that's, you know, everybody hates returns. I don't like them any more than anybody else does, but they're part of business. If you take good measurements, if you take a picture, I like to put a picture of the measurement, um, the measurements in the listing with the actual measuring taping on it. That actually gives me something to refer back to if someone asks a question that's not covered in the, the item specifics and listing. You can always look back at the picture as well without having to go grab the pair of jeans. If you take the pictures and you, you know, Try, do your best to measure correctly, then it falls where it falls, and you're still going to get some returns. But I'm I'm okay with three percent. I mean, I just get them back and I resell them. You know that if as long as they're okay, and I have yet to have anyone send me a pair of jeans back that I couldn't resell. I'm, I'm knock on wood. I'll probably get one tomorrow. But so far, it's been great. Uh, I'm going to answer the next question for you. The crazy card wanted to know where you live and. You live in North Carolina, correct? That's right. That's right, in the Charlotte area. Okay. And Tanya wants to know, what about vintage jeans like Gloria Vanderbilt or Jordache? How do they do for you? I don't sell them. <laughs> you know, I, I don't sell them because I have found that there's a certain brands out there there's nothing wrong with selling them. Don't get me wrong. Um, and you definitely can find one offs, but I kind of have a threshold in, in my mind and that threshold is $20. I, I'm usually able to buy jeans for just over five bucks. I'm able to ship them for five ninety in a padded flat rate envelope. And then after fees and so on, I can still net about five to $6 on a $20 sale. That's kind of my threshold. That's kind of my floor. And when you get in some of those brands, there's just such a glut of jeans on eBay that are in some brands at such lower prices. Man, it's, it's just hard to get somebody to justify paying you 20, 22, 24, 26 bucks for a pair of jeans when they see 10 other pair for $7 and $8. And I have no idea how people are making any money on those, but they may just want to get rid of them. But I just stay away from those. I price a bit higher and I try to focus on about, I, I have a brand sheet I came up with one time and it ended up being about 16 to 18 brands and women's and about the same in men's. And I just go after those brands. I don't really fool with any other ones unless I just see them out and they're really cool. And I'll look them up just to see, it's like, hey, I've never seen this before. And I'll look it up to see if it's worth something. But other than that, I just, I just focus on those brands. Uh, Garage Flips has a question for you. What do you tell somebody when you're at a yard sale and you're buying 10 female <clears throat> pairs of jeans and they come up and ask you, what are you doing with them? Do you tell them if you're a reseller or you tell, give them a story? <laughs> uh, the age old question to tell or to not tell. Um, I guess my response to that, it varies on the day. <laughs> But sometimes I'll make a joke out and say, well, I'm going to wear them, of course. Or I'll say, yeah, they're presents. But what I like to say to a lot of people, and I, I say this with a straight face, believe it or not, I tell them I'm a personal shopper. And I kind of am a personal shopper for people I'm never going to meet. You know, I kind of consider myself that in what I do in selling jeans, believe it or not. I consider myself to be a shopper for someone who's looking for something they either can't go find on their own or won't go find on their own. 
But honestly, people at yard sales, I mean, you know, I think resellers in general, sometimes we think people are too suspicious of us when we're at yard sales or thrift stores or wherever we're at. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like I, I have told people, say, hey, well, I'm going to resell. Them. And they're like, oh, OK. You know, I mean, what are they going to do? What are they going to say to me? I have said that before. What are they going to say to me? Well, I'm not going to sell you those now. I'm going to say, OK. And I'm going to walk away, you know, because that's their prerogative. It's their it's their items until we make the sale. And but most people, I've never actually had any someone do that. I've never had someone say, "Oh, you know." And I've told plenty of people I'm going to try to resell something, and especially when I'm bargaining, you're know, trying to haggle and get a better price. I don't know. I wouldn't even sweat it. I mean, I know we all like to scurry around and act like you know, and try to remain unnoticed and hope that nobody bothers us sometimes when we go out sourcing, but. I think most people don't care. They just want to get rid of their stuff. Okay. Uh, we have another question from um, Swamp Picker. You want us to know how many jeans do you have in inventory? Um, I think right now I have about. Right now, I think I have about. Uh, I don't know the number off the top of my head. Maybe just a, a tad over 500, maybe 515, I want to say, somewhere in there. I've got a few that I still need to list as well. And But that's where I've been running lately. I've kind of taken a little hiatus from jeans the last month or so, only because of the summer slowdown with eBay clothing sales. I've experienced it too, as many people have. And so I'm actually get, getting ready to start listing jeans um, and sourcing jeans hard Um right here at the beginning of this next month, July, because I'm going to be ready for back to school. So I have some goals I want to hit over this next month, but just over 500 is what I have listed at the moment. Okay. We have a question from Brad Swift. What is your average turnover time on a pair of jeans? Most people wouldn't have this number, but I bet Prof does. <laughs> Yeah, if you go back through some of my videos too, you'll see one I did on my spreadsheet back, oh, back in the dark ages, a few months back. But when my channel was still kind of new, and I guess it's still new. But that was one of the things that I tracked. I actually am not tracking it as much now because I feel like I have a good handle on it. Basically, it worked out like this. Women's jeans on average were selling within, on, on average, in 24 days. Um, men's jeans were selling 22 days. From the time of list now the caveat i'm going to say i'm going to give you that is this i really started selling jeans hard back around mid-august of last year was when i really started focusing on jeans and i had you know my sales kept growing with it over time now obviously there's been a slowdown in the past month or two partly because you know, the, the summer's clothing slow down, but also because I haven't been focusing on listing as many jeans as of late. So for two reasons there, the sales have slowed down. So right now, this time of year, I'm betting that number would be higher, but not necessarily, you know, like I listed a few today actually, and a couple of them sold tonight, you know, go figure. But I think you can get on average about a three, maybe four week turnaround on average. That doesn't, but I've had jeans that have sat for, I think the longest pair I've had was about eight months. I had a pair that just, you know, I made it a good old canceled and just forgot about it. And it took about eight months to sell. But I think you can sell most for three weeks, maybe three and a half weeks at the, at the most on average. Okay, I have a question for you before I go back to some of the viewer ones. You, do you work, do this by yourself, or I know you introduced me to your girlfriend. Uh, does she help you, or yeah, anybody, did you hire anybody? Yeah, I started out completely by myself. Earlier this year, she started taking some pictures for me, which is a big help. Um, we worked out an arrangement in, in terms of, of money and so on. And she's helped me with some sourcing trips as well. She's, she's really good at finding um, jeans. She, I basically trained her on what I knew. So then we went into stores. She could focus on the jeans to start. I would actually go focus on some hard goods and so on. And then I would go over and help her. We kind of have two sets of eyes on it. But 
it's still probably 85 to 90 percent me um you know so it's main it's mainly me at this point but you know she has given some help i don't have any employees i have looked at that i placed an ad on craigslist earlier this year and that was a debacle um I got, I placed an ad for a $10 an hour person to help with, you know, it was kind of generic. It wasn't like I even put in their eBay listing or anything like that. And, and you pay money to put an ad on Craigslist. It was like 25 bucks. And I thought, well, you know, if I get 10 responses, great. That maybe I'll find somebody, you know, I was, I was thinking about hiring someone. I'm like, I'm going to see what I can find. I got, uh, 47 responses within six hours. <laughs> it was <laughs> insane. I actually had to take the ad down. I, I couldn't, it just got ridiculous. I mean, people were faxing me, res or trying to, they were emailing me resumes attached and just saying, hey, I'm an executive assistant at company XYZ and I'd really like, here's all my skills and I'm going, oh my gosh, I'm looking for a part-time person, you know, <laughs> Probably going to be about 10 bucks an hour is what it's going to come out. I was actually going to pay him for Gene. You know, I thought about that rate or even the hourly rate. I thought about it different ways. It was nuts. So to anybody out there who wants to hire someone, you can make it happen. Now, whether it'll be a good person or not, well, that's the way it is with everything. You got to, you got to try to figure that part out. But Craigslist is great for running ads. You will get responses. I promise you. Okay. We haven't, Question here for another question from Swap Picker. He wants to know: Do you sell many diamond gusset? I think I pronounced that right. G U S S E T. Diamond. Is this a pair of jeans you're asking about? What are they asking about? I think they're asking about a pair of jeans. I've never. I'm not a jeans person, so I wouldn't even know that name anyway. I don't actually know that one, which just goes to show you. You know, every time I walk in a store. Virtually every time I walk in a store, I still find a pair, sometimes more than one, a brand I've never heard of. It's very common. There are a lot of jean brands out there. So there you go. Okay. Uh, Alex Robinson wants to know, do you come across big E jeans? Um, no. No. <laughs> I have, I'm aware of Big E jeans, and I do look regularly, but I have yet to find one. And I don't really worry about it too much. You know, if I find one, great. Um, I found plenty of silver tabs. They're out there. They sell for good money. Um, but Big E, haven't found them yet. Okay. Well, there's Tanya. I think it's one of her well, funny joke questions. But let's see what it says. North Carolina, do you watch Southern Charm? Do you know Thomas Ravenel? I loved it last season, but I have not watched yet this year. <laughs> I am not familiar with that one, but if it's a TV show, which it sounds like it is, I honestly, oh, it might be a YouTube channel too, but I, I actually don't watch much television. Um, I just got too much other stuff going on, but I do not know that one, so sorry. Sorry, Tanya. Oh, then she made a comment. Well, wait, maybe that's South Carolina. <laughs> and we we yeah. don't even claim them. That's a whole other state. We don't want to talk about them. They're just they're <laughs> just doing their own thing. Okay. Um, well, I'll wait and see if there's any more questions. I mean, well, they might probably this, but I might ask my mind. Are you afraid of doing a show like this and killing your market? <laughs> when is this question ever going to die? It's not going to die, is it? It's not going to die, is it, Chris? Well, I, I had to ask, you know, I had to have some fun with the show. No, I'm not. And you know what? I'm not afraid of it for the same reason that Target is not afraid to train people in their stores on how they market things and how to sell to customers or how to come up with a logistics system. Oh, everyone's going to rip us off and do it a better way. Okay. That's just silly. First of all, I'm not doing anything that everyone looking in the chat or, you know, your subscribers or my subscribers couldn't go do on their own already. Second of all, the information has been out there for a long time. 
it's not like all of a sudden prof sales comes on the scenes and everybody and their brother is going to become a gene seller and the market's going to be flooded and jeans are going to be selling for two ninety nine on eBay. That's just not the way it works. Um, jeans are, are work, honestly. Um, and they take some time for sure. I've kind of gotten it down to a science, at least I feel like for what I do, but you know what? I still don't know it all by a long shot. I think somebody in the chat was talking about that little picket, that little pocket on the Levi's is called a picket pocket. Hey, I learned something new. I didn't know it was a picket pocket. Never really looked it up. And it is sometimes there on men's and women's jeans. And that, and that makes sense, you know, which means you got to go to some of the other reason, ways to tell men's from women's. But I don't really, going back to the topic, I don't really worry about that. I just think that, you know, the market is huge. If you go right now and look at how many jeans listings are on eBay, it's an enormous number. It's going to be probably, I haven't looked in the last probably month or so, it's probably going to be at least a couple million between men's and women's listings. It's a huge market. Um, and so there is room for everybody. You know, I, I had, I just think that 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 particular fear by a lot of uh, resellers is just way overblown um, and just not very likely to ever happen. And even if it did happen, what are we going to do? Like keep all our knowledge to ourselves and never interact with each other. We're never going to learn anything. You know, if we don't talk to each other, we're not going to learn. That's how we learn. We talk to other people and pick their brain and hear about their experiences and their knowledge and you know, they hear about ours, and that's how we learn. That's how we evolve. That's just the way it works. So I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, we have another question, a couple of questions from Garage Flip. She wants to know, how is your fourth quarter with used jeans? Is it a gift-type item? Not necessarily. Um, my fourth quarter was, was really strong. If, if you consider, I don't, know, I don't know what you consider the fourth quarter, but if you consider the fourth quarter the last three months of the year, uh, it's funny, when we were in Gap, and when I worked at Gap, they used to include November, December, and January was the fourth quarter. And they put January there because January, your sales sucked. <laughs> so they wanted to show a good number for the fourth quarter, so they lumped January in with uh, December and, October, and November. I, I had that same fear um, last year. It, it crept in the back of my mind a little. But I actually saw accelerating sales. Um, I think people just get in that, maybe they just get in that mindset of buying, you know, at the holidays, that frenzy mindset of just got to get things, got to get things, got to buy, buy, buy. It's like how we're all programmed as a society. And I didn't see any drop off at all. As a matter of fact, I just, I saw my sales kept increasing each month. You know, you know, I saw the amount of, you know, that I was selling through was staying high. I was actually at one point there, if you go back and look at my number, but I want to say, you know, I was selling through like uh, 80 to 90% of my listings, the items that I had listed each month. Um, now, it wasn't exactly those items that I was necessarily selling, but say I listed 100 items in November, I was selling probably like 85 or 90 of those. Um, general. So it was great. You know, as I was listing them, I was selling almost as many, so I couldn't get ahead of my listings, which was a good problem to have. But fourth quarter is great for everything. So don't be afraid of that if you want to get into selling jeans. Okay. Uh, Black Eyed Joe wants to know, do you wash and iron the jeans from Goodwill before listing them? Absolutely not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why people think they have to do that. You are going to spend so much time and money. I mean, if you're running your washer and dryer or ironing or wh whatever it is you're doing, you are, you are wasting time and you are spending money on your, your power, your utilities and so on, your water bill, power bill. Look, here's what you do. When you go out and you source these jeans, check those things right away. Check for... First of all, if, if, a jean, if a pair of jeans is, smells like smoke or something, unless it was a high-end brand, I wouldn't buy it anyway. And, and I mean a really high-end brand. Second of all, look, look, look through it and see if you see dirt. See if you see stains everywhere. If you see, as gross as this sounds, stuff in the crotch. And yes, that is an occupational hazard of buying and selling jeans. Um, if you see those things, I wouldn't buy them. 
I want to buy them. Now you're going to miss it sometimes, and that might be a pair that you might want to throw in the washer. But but I just wouldn't do it. And as far as ironing them, it's a pair of jeans. It's not. It's not a. You know the pants to a Armani suit. You know the Armani suit pants that need to look perfect and need to be pressed perfectly. Or I just think that's overkill. You know, and you just don't need to do that. And by the way, you know. I don't know how everybody else who's made there's some other people that are selling jeans. I I fold this pair of jeans goes up into a padded flat rate mailer, which is just about this wide. Do you think there's any chance in the world that's going to stay nice and pressed by the time it gets bumped around by the USPS and it's rolled up in a little package, especially if it's a bigger pair? I just think it's overkill to do all that. Just do it. Take care of on the front end when you buy the jeans. Don't buy ones that have all these issues you've got to fix when you get home. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. You're just going to slow yourself down. You're going to hurt your profit per hour if you do that. Uh, Black guy Joe made a comment saying some of the Japanese brand jeans call big money. Have you ever sold any Japanese brands? Yeah, well, actually, were they Japanese or were they Korean? Uh, I had a pair that I sold once. They might have been Korean. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But actually, they came back with a Vero complaint. <laughs> so I had to take them down. I actually got a Vero complaint on them saying they weren't legitimate. And the funny thing is um, they were exactly the same as every other pair I'd seen like that. I'm not going to say the name of that brand because there might be somebody out there who's selling that brand right now and I don't want you freaking out and going to your eBay listing. And because I've seen other ones sell on eBay and I've seen them complete and been fine. I don't know why mine got flagged. Maybe they truly did think it was uh, counterfeit. But Japanese, I, I don't run across them very often or any, any from like, you know, that are actually those that are you know that are from those countries not made in those countries but from those countries i just don't run across them okay uh d skinner wants to know prof do you find all stores overpricing true religion jeans no not necessarily um sometimes they miss them um you've always got to watch with true religions I'm I'm not one of these people who think that there's all these fake jeans out there. They are out there, but there are some people who literally think every high-end pair of jeans out there is a fake. Um, True Religion is a brand that is fake, so you will find them on the racks. I I find right many True Religions to be honest with you. They're not that rare, um, but store sometimes a goodwill will throw them on that love rack and throw them on there for 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever they feel is I, I don't know where they come up with their prices honestly they just make them up out of thin air i think sometimes but i find them on the racks quite a bit honestly honestly if i had to think about all the true religions i've ever found the majority of them have been just on the regular racks and for five bucks because the people in the back don't really know what they're doing um, and they got to get stuff out. They're not in the business of letting it sit in the back room. They need to get it out to the floor and they just lump them all together a lot of times, throw them on hangers and send them on their way. Okay. Um, Turtle Trader wants you to know that he lives in the in area home of Blue Bell Wrangles. I'm sorry, you broke up there, man. I couldn't understand you. Turtle Trader said, Prof Sales, I live in Triad area, home of Bluebell Wranglers. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's about two and a half hours away from me, probably. He's up in the Raleigh area. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Cherry Johnson. She says, do you increase the price on plus size jeans? Do I what on the price? What did she increase. ask? Increase. Yes, um, and the reason I do that is this. Plus size jeans, it, it kind of depends a little bit, but most plus size jeans are gonna be larger sizes. And if you think about economics, you know, economics works on supply and demand. Scarcity is one of the topics you talk about in economics, how, how prevalent something is out there in the marketplace. 
Plus sizes in general are not as common. And I would argue you find less of them um, in good shape in, in the better brands, believe it or not, because I think the people who buy them and they, they just hang on to them. So I do price them up a little bit. Um, and the only reason I do that is because they're a little bit harder to find. They're a little bit, they take up a little bit more room to store. They're not really much. They theoretically could take up more money to ship if you couldn't fit them in a padded flat rate, although you can get some pretty big sizes in a padded flat rate if you work at it. But they're just a little bit rarer than the average sizes. I mean, when you go out, and I, I have a video where I talk about this, about selling jeans. When you see the common sizes, like twos, fours, sixes, and eights, and what I mean by that is common, and that's what you're gonna find a lot of out in a, in a thrift store, for instance, you know, that should tell you that they're not necessarily that rare um, and you're probably not going to get as high end dollar for that. But when you find those bigger sizes, when you find like 16s and 18s, um, you know, they're a good find. I mean, I usually, you know, I start a lot of jeans off around $25 for a price. It's sort of run in the middle jeans, somewhere around that range. But a plus size, it's a bigger size. I usually will start closer to 30. Um, and you'll usually get it because, you know, those, those people who wear those sizes, they have trouble finding them at their regular stores. You don't, I know this from my time in retail, you don't get as many of the sizes at the extremes, especially on the high end. You know, you don't get as many 44 inch waist jeans as you do 34 inch jeans. You just don't, you don't get as many size 16s or 18s as you get size 10s. You just don't. So there's less of them out there. So, you know, the market has said, hey, you can get a few a few bucks more for them. And that's what I do. Okay. Uh, another question from Garage Flips. And he says it's a serious question. Do you oh. smell the crotch of each pair of jeans before you list? <laughs> I saw that go through in the chat. And I was wondering if you're going to get to that. Okay. No, I do not do that. But you can... Oh, this is going to sound so gross and you guys are going to be turned off. Sometimes you can see things in the crotch, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not going to go any further detail than that. But when you see it, then you know that, you know, I, I mean, imagine this. Used or not, I mean, if you bought something off of eBay and it came with bodily fluids of any kind visible in it, what would you do with that item? <laughs> you know, I imagine what your feedback might look like, right, for that item. So I, I just, I don't sell those, and I usually don't even wash them. I usually just donate them back. Um, I, I try not to buy them in the first place if I can avoid. I actually do check that. I'll look. I will vis visibly look. But uh, smelling them, no. I don't go that far. Well, I'm sure that you're looking at the comments, and they're talking about the 99-cent people selling jeans what are your thoughts on that considering you want to make the most money not the lowest well it goes back to a, a topic that i talk i've talked about several times before and it's perception of value and and, and i look at it this way if somebody's going to sell something to me for 99 cents or even you know a dollar 99 or 2.99 and I'm buying it off of eBay or Amazon, I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious of that item. I'm suspicious of, I don't really care so much how they got it. Yeah, it could be stolen or whatever, but how would ever know? But I'm more suspicious that there's something maybe wrong with it they're not disclosing. And I'm not as apt to buy it. Now, on the other hand, I'm probably not gonna buy one at the high end either. It's, you know, $39.99 necessarily. I think people, you know, buying behavior has proven that People, when presented with multiple choices on a similar item, will usually check a, pick a price somewhere in the middle. Um, and that's where I try to aim for. I mean, I wouldn't get hung up on those tiny values for your items. Just look at it like, you know, hey, take great pictures, write a good bullet point description, write a good descriptive title with lots of great keywords in it so people will be able to find it. And people are going to respond to that. They're going to see your pair and look at that other person's pair and say, well, man, you know, I could buy that. But look at it this way. Even if they buy that other super cheap pair, well, now the next buyer is going to see yours. 
you know so I just I just don't even worry about things like that I think we get too I think we get too worked up about stuff like that in the reselling community you know just price your stuff for what your research tells you it should be worth and let the let the chips fall where they, they do on those other low price items I, I wouldn't give them a second thought okay, you're talking about truly legend in the chat as you've probably seen my question to you is how many fake genes have you found and besides true religion are, how many other are actually fake that you have to worry about uh, diesel is another one you you could have to, you, you could have some issues with specifically men's diesel um, they're expensive genes new um, true religion is obviously the most I honestly think beyond those two, I think those two take up a lot of the market. There probably are some other ones out there, and maybe I just don't deal on those brands that often. You know, the brands I deal in, um, the Vigas, Lucky, Seven for All Mankind, American Eagle, Levi's, uh, Silver Jeans, which are uh, I really like Silver Jeans, uh, Joe's Jeans. I just don't think they're fake that much. I mean, they're not, I mean, some of them are decent, go for decent money new but I mean could there be counterfeits out there and could I have even listed one in some time or sold one of course it could have been but I don't think you have to worry about it. I think where you have to start to worry is when jeans start getting up when jeans sell for more than about a hundred bucks a pair new and up that's when you probably ought to give them a second look there's a forum it's called um, authentic forum I believe might be authenticforum.com and it's a jeans it's got a jeans section where they talk about jeans and what you can look for and it has you know sections of different brands and so on you can go on there and you can find they talk about other things too I believe not just jeans but you can find things on there about how to authenticate jeans if you so want and it's probably good to at least go there once if you're gonna get into selling jeans at least go through some of them and kind of have in your mind okay this is what to look for I noticed somebody mentioned you know True Religion has the little silver thread, the little micro printing in it. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, there's all these things you can look for with those. But um, I think those are really the two main ones, Diesel and True Religion, that I've seen. Okay. Now, in regards to jeans, have you ever thought of or have you sold jean jackets? Because I'm sure there's Levi jeans and stuff like that. So, I mean, jackets. So, I have dabbled. Um, I recently sold, well, not that recent, I guess it was a couple months ago. I sold a, uh, was that Harley Davidson jacket, maybe? It was a denim jacket. I like the ones that are, that are branded. Levi's jackets can go for some decent money, sure. And you can get them cheap a lot of times. Not always. You know, my store here, actually, um, a lot of times jackets will come in at $7.99. Which, depending on the jacket, may make it not worth so much. But if you want to go through the jacket circular you know, fixture and so on and look for denim jackets, I think that's a great way to get into um, just outerwear in general. And you definitely can find some values there. I just don't deal with a lot of them. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't my thing, I guess. But there's, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's definitely great profit to be made there. So if you want to go in that direction... I absolutely think that's a great idea. Well, I see we have a couple of latecomers naming Chad and Raken is in the chat. So, Mr. 10,000 subscribers showed up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chad. And D. Skinner, I know research will answer a lot of my questions, but this show is for trying to help people that not necessarily won't do the research, but pick somebody's brain that does already know all what they have out there he's he's right though I mean D Skinner is correct and I and I tell people this and in one of the videos I have on my channel I say if you want to sell clothing and I think Steve would probably back this up you need to spend some time researching completed solds how many listings there are how much of a market there is for the item you want to sell um, you know sort of particulars of certain brands and so on because man you know there is just no substitute for that because when you get in these stores sometimes you don't have internet connection sometimes you run into a brand you can't find anything on you got to go on your gut you've got to, or what I like to do when I go in and I source jeans 
I don't look up anything in the brands that I like to buy because I know. I know what's going to sell. I know what which fits are the best. I know which sizes are the best. And you can only get that if you do the research. Um, you know, you have to spend some time doing that with clothing. You can obviously go buy a bunch of stuff and hope that it's good. And it might be. But to me, it's like spending a little time, you know, get to, you know, get to know that Steve had a great book um, on, on brands, 101 Killer Brands. And I think he wrote a follow up. And there's, there's lots of great brands in there. It's a great book. But as Steve would be the first to tell you, that's just scratching the surface. You know, there's so many more to it. And that's why clothing can feel overwhelming to people. There's just so many brands out there and so many different items and so many different types of items. But, you know, you just pick your, your niche and you go after it and you'll get better and better at it every day. Uh, I see uh, Brothers wants me to know that she's here. Andy's saying goodnight to everybody. She says it's a good time in Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you extra, right, uh, Andy. Now we got about nine more minutes. I got a couple more. Well, I think we can kind of hear all my questions and all the comments and everything else. So, is there any more questions? Last minute, two minute questions for uh, Jason. Write them out. Ask them out now. If you're catching this late, you're going to have to rewind. Yeah, and, and I would just want to say too, Chris, to everybody who's listening, um, you know, and Steve would probably, Steve would be the first person to tell you this. You can make a, a living selling jeans or really selling any clothing you want on eBay. Lots of people do it. Um, but I'm going to say this, there's, you know, there's a couple caveats. One, you have to put in the research like we talked about a moment ago. But the second thing is, Clothing is work. Don't think that in any way, shape, or form that you can just walk into a thrift store, buy 50 items, throw them up on eBay, and sell them by the, all by the weekend. It just doesn't work that way. You definitely have to spend your time wisely, spend your money as wisely as you can. You're going to make mistakes with it, but you can translate jeans or any sorts of um, shirts or so on you know, that you want and, to, and you can sell higher dollar items like Steve, you know, did for uh, a, a lot of years. I know he's gotten back into eBay, but you can, that can translate into, you know, you can start selling the higher end stuff. You can sell suits, you can sell shoes. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And the great thing that I love about jeans and clothing in general is it is readily available. It is all over the place. It is all around you. Um, there's no shortage of it. And for the most part, most of it can be gotten pretty cheap. So you can get a good chunk of inventory without forking out thousands and thousands of dollars of uh, your hard earned capital. So jeans, pro jeans provide a way and as well as the other clothing, but they provide a way for you to make a living at this if you want. I mean, once you start getting up to, if, even if you're selling run-of-the-mill items, you start getting up to 1,000 or 1,500 listings, you know, you just get these economies of scale going. And even in, you know, you're, there's going to be days you're going to be selling 15, 20 items sometimes, you know, and it's just, it's not a lot of money, maybe necessarily on any one, but man, it, it, it does add up and it gives you a base. You can jump into other things from whether it be other higher end clothing, or if you take your business in some other direction. So I really, I really like the, the approach and uh, you know, it's uh, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. I got to mention Ronnie too. Ronnie is like one of my mentors in, in clothing for sure. Ronnie Hart. Um, you know, these guys, they've made it work and they would, they would tell you it can be done, but you've got to put in the time, put in the work and just, you know, stay focused on building a business and not get too caught up in, short-term results of what happens from day to day. So that's that's my little public service announcement. <laughs> well, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, Cherry Vincent wants to know, before reselling, what were you a professor of? Political science and international relations. Okay. Fun uh, stuff. <laughs> Lee Skinner says, Prof Sales, you're a cool dude with valuable information. Stay true. Oh, I appreciate that, and I definitely will try to do that the best I can. And hey, I make mistakes like anybody else. If I say something that's wrong, 
I'll be the first one to admit it, but it's never done with an intention to deceive anybody. It's just done out of ignorance. <laughs> so, um, and you know, and I'm still learning like everybody else. And I really appreciate the, the comment. Amelia has a question. She asks, how can you tell if jeans are made looking distressed or if it's due to wear? That's a great question. Um, for the most part, a distressed pair of jeans is going to have, it's not going to, I don't want to say it's never going to have a hole all the way through it because sometimes that can happen. But usually there's going to be some threads pulled across it and it's going to look sort of, I don't want to say uniform, but it's going to look neat. Um, now, obviously, you know, if you distress a knee on a pair of jeans and, you know, you can see the, the cotton, the white cotton fibers underneath, you know, and it's just been pulled like that. And if somebody, you know, if they wear out the knee or wear out the pants leg or whatever, and there's a hole, you know, that goes to another level. I would say this, if you're not certain don't put the word distressed in the title don't put the word distressed in the description just take your photographs note the condition you know take photographs of any areas that have areas you think maybe holes might be distressed you're not sure um i mean distressed is a selling point for some people but it's not as important as the other keywords in a title of a pair of jeans or in the description if, from what i've seen people are going to focus more on the brand and the size and the fit. And then they're going to look at wash and condition and things like that. So hope that answered that question. Turtle Trader wants to know, do you sell anything else besides jeans? Yes. Um, I sell other things on eBay. I have sold a variety of other knickknacks and stuff. Right now I've got a few DVDs and things up there, some stuff from the house and so on. And I and because I sell on Amazon, um, Amazon doesn't really allow you to sell uh, worn, you know, previously worn items. I haven't really gotten into selling clothing on Amazon really at this point, but I do sell a lot of other things on Amazon: Commuter, uh, consumer electronics, automotive, books, you know, CDs, the normal the normal stuff that everybody else sells on <laughs> Amazon. But um, jeans is how I got my start, and it's still kind of a bread and butter, and you know, provides a nice. A nice income so okay uh, swamp pecker and this might be our last question from reviewers as do worn jeans sell so I'm not sure what he means by that do worn like just pre-owned jeans or um, probably, probably means like you were talking about the ones that have people that wore the uh, jean the hole into the jeans I wouldn't know because I don't sell them. <laughs> I don't mean to give a flip answer, but the reality is I am very conscious of what I send to someone when it's jeans, when it's a, a clothing. I don't want them to get an item from me, a clothing that is more worn than they thought it was. So if I'm in doubt about it being worn, like if it's got dirt and stains all on it and so on, I don't even fool with it because for me, I know this sounds cliche, but I think of it, if I wouldn't wear it or I don't want my girlfriend to wear it, I don't want to sell it. If it's, if it's that beat up that we wouldn't wear it, I don't sell it. So I tend to stay away from things that are heavily worn. I know there is value in them. I know somebody's going to, somebody's going to ding me and say, Oh, well you can sell worn Levi's from the 1950s for good. Knock yourself out, you know. I, I have no problem with that. I just don't like to do it because it's just sort of a personal preference for me. Uh, Chad made a comment. I got great money out of holy diesel jeans. Yeah, no, and you can because that's a high-end brand, and there's still people who will pay for them. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I just have a thing about it, you know. I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And as long as you're honest about the condition and fully disclose everything, you know, you're not doing anything wrong. But we know sometimes that buyers can be, you know, duped is their word. And, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to take a feedback kit. I don't want to, 
I don't know. I just want to deal with that. You know, I just try to sell a pair that look really great. And usually the feedback I get on my jeans is these are great. They're awesome. They're amazing. Man, they look terrific. You know, the only issues I ever have with jeans is just fit. And, you know, you're always going to have that issue with clothing. There's just no way around that. Okay. I don't know if you want to answer this question from D Skinner. What you want to know, what's your feedback look like percentage? Percent wise, I'm at 99.9, .9, I believe, on eBay. So pretty good. Um, I had, <laughs> I the, the the negative I got. You know, the, the only negatives I've ever gotten on feedback, um, I've gotten one negative, and I've gotten maybe two neutrals, and they weren't on jeans. <laughs> That's the funny thing. <laughs> they were on other items that had nothing to do with clothing at all. Um, you know, so. Go figure, but so pretty good, you know. I haven't had, I haven't really had any issues. I got a negative, or not a negative. I got a neutral on, excuse me. I got a neutral on a puzzle. Uh, the, the lady said it had a hole in the box and it was shrunk wrap and it was fine and you know whatever. <laughs> so, but um, and I got a negative on selling something that was expired. They said was a uh, there was a language barrier with this buyer. They said it was an expired uh, medicine for their baby. It was actually a liquid vitamin. I don't know if it was really qualified as medicine. And they bought it like a few days before it expired. And by the time I shipped it and got it to them, it had expired. And so they left me a negative. I'm a terrible seller. What can I say? You know, so I was like, it was literally like a $10 sale too. It wasn't even really a lot of money. It was just something. I don't even know why I sold it, to be honest with you. I'd had it up listed for a long time, and by the time it sold, it, the expiration passed, and I don't think it would have done anything, but, you know, whatever. And they actually accused me and eBay of selling expired medicine, which was an interesting feedback, but whatever. <laughs> well, I am not seeing any more last-minute questions, so I want to thank everybody for watching. We actually hit uh, 35 people at the highest viewer point tonight Jason nice and I want to thank you for being on I know it was not necessarily a last minute request but I mean I talked about it before and then I it popped into you about this week and you were interested and I want to really thank you for taking your time to be on well thanks Chris for having me and everybody in the chat and the questions great questions I appreciate them all and if you got any other questions, uh, you know where to find me on YouTube. You know where to find me in the Reseller Society. And um, I really appreciate it. Uh, you want to are you going to be able to stick around for a little bit for an after show, or is it too late for you? Uh, sure, I can stick around for a, a few minutes, sure. All right, well, if anybody wants to come in for an after show, I'll put the link in the comments, and then I'll put another link in the Reseller Society. So see you Sunday. Oh, and Sunday is not going to be a WP and Fox show. It's going to be a My Life edition with Mr. The Albatross. Hmm. So, see you all then. All right.